Okay, all right. So as I earlier said, our topic for discussion on the health segment is our health as uh, lawyers as um, COVID-19 looms. Yeah. We all know COVID-19 has become a, a household, something uh, we, we often hear. But the question is, do we really know much about COVID-19? Do we have an in-depth knowledge into COVID-19, i.e. the preventive measures, how we contract it, the chances one stand of recovery and even death? Yeah. So COVID-19 is um, one of the flu families. We all know flu is caused by virus. So it's one of the um, uh, flu families which can present with either mild symptoms, no symptoms, or the severest form of symptoms. Yeah. So when we come to the um, causes, we all know before we get, you are contracted to um, or infected to a disease, there should be a portal of entry. That's where it will pass to host, and then a portal of exit, where it will come out from the host and then a susceptible host. That's the person who is likely to be infected. Hello? Are we on? Yes, please go ahead, go ahead. Okay. All right, so the person who is likely to be infected. So, um, uh, you know, um, the portal of entry and exit of COVID-19 is through droplets. That can be from our mouth when we talk from our nostrils, and then we can also have some passing through our eyes. That's why we are advised that you shouldn't poke your nose or try uh, scratching the eyes or any part with unclean hands. That can be a source of um, uh, infection to you. And then we also have um, uh, some people who are most highly risked to the disease. Though we are all at risk, but we have some who are highly at risk. Those people always go with premorbid um, uh, diseases. They are already with some special diseases in them, such as those with immunocompromised, like those with TB, those with HIV, those having asthma, those having chronic bronchitis. The pro chronic bronchitis is for a few weeks, the person is fine. Another time to come, the person is having some cough and got in breathing, and so on. So we also have alcoholics and then those who smoke. They stand the higher chances of uh, by getting COVID-19 and if possible, dying from it. Yeah. As we already said, uh, we present with some signs and symptoms. But majority of our cases present with no symptoms. The study shows that about 92% of um, infected persons will go without any symptom. But aside this, if you may present with symptoms, the symptoms will come with severe headache. The symptoms will come with chills, fever, mostly a temperature of um, 10 degrees or more. Then anosmia. The anosmia is loss of sense of um, smell. You wouldn't be able to smell anything. Then we also have agusia, which is loss of taste. You wouldn't be able to taste anything. No matter how sugary a substance is, you can't be able to test it. No matter how salty it is, you won't be able to test it. So those are the commonest uh, signs and symptoms you may have. They may be cough, sneezing, or difficulty breathing. But the commonest one that actually runs across, even in informatics, are the anosmia, which is loss of sense of smell, and then the agusia, which is um, loss of taste. Okay, then we also come to um, the pathophysiology. The part of histology is, is actually how the disease process affects the physical being. This is more medical, but I'm just bringing this in for us to appreciate the effect COVID-19 will really have on a human being. So what happened is that when one is infested by a um, coronavirus, either through the nostrils, through the throat, or the trachea, it goes to lodge in the lungs. The lungs is where they, 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 they develop the lungs is a very conducive um, place for the virus to replicate, to multiply more and then cause harm. So while they are in the lungs, they tend to feed on the parenchyma cells of the lungs. The parenchyma cells are the supporting cells and tissues of the lungs. So they feed on them, break down the peripheral blood vessels that are found in the lungs. 
So when these blood cells are broken, they bleed and turn to clots. So the clots will actually consolidate in the lungs. That will make uh, an infected someone difficulty breathing. And of course, this one is in the severest form of it. So mostly when they are consolidated, there will be difficulty breathing. There will be cut off of blood supply to the brain cells, which we call anosia. And that can actually lead to fatality. So mostly patients you see that are intensive at intensive care unit and have been on um, nebulizers and um, this, um, ventilators are at this time. The lungs are actually consolidated due to the blood clots and then there will be difficulty in breathing and they have to get them to the um, uh, intensive care unit for the ventilators to be used on them. But recent um, uh, studies have shown that the ventilators used on them straight away is not even helping. That actually lead them to a speedy death as we expected to have not achieved. So what happened is that there, there is um, um, a use of steroid to talk about because a lot of people are now abusing the steroids. People take it as a preventive measure, but in reality, steroids such as desamethasone is not a preventive measure to COVID. It was introduced to be able to help those patients who are having difficulty in breathing. And also, we also introduced heparin, anticoagulant, and aspirin. These are given to the patient to be able to melt off the clotted blood that are causing consolidations in the lungs. Yeah. So we come to, to the use of um, dexamethasone, as I already um, stated. Ever since this was made, we have a series of reports that people are now abusing dexamethasone. The purpose of dexamethasone is to help prevent multiple organ failure and it's not a preventive measure to COVID. Please, let's take note of this. Desamethasone is steroid. And what happens is that when one is infected with COVID-19, because um, something new has been introduced into the system, the body's own immune system tries to fight that particular thing out. And in so doing, it, it activates all the organs and systems in the body to aggressively attack the particular condition that has been invaded, which is the, the COVID-19. So by this action, most of the organs tend to fail, such as the heart, especially the lungs, the kidney, liver can all fail because they are in aggressive performance. So the zemitazone was introduced to help minimize the effect of this aggression. So the purpose of the zemitazone is only to minimize the risk of multiple uh, by organ failure and not as a preventive measure for COVID-19. Are we good to go? Go ahead, go ahead. All right, all right. Okay, so um, uh, that is it, um, uh, by the way. And then, um, uh, as I earlier said, um, uh, those who are um, predisposed, who are at higher risk of getting the infection, we advise that at this time, they maintain very minimal contact, either with or without um, uh, this and uninfected people, because you may not know who is actually infected and who is not. Uh, so I think um, uh, that is because the other aspect of it is uh, management, and the management is purely medical. So I don't think that is needed. But the reassuring thing is that COVID-19 is not a death warranty. It is actually not a death warranty because looking at the fatality rate, it is, it is minimal. So we don't have to overburden ourselves with thinking of contracting it or like dying out of it. But we have to just take the precautionary measures and be safe. Yeah. Uh, so, doctor. Yes. Um, I think earlier on, I sent you a few questions. Yeah, just, yeah. Yes. Could you just touch on a few of them so that we can then move to the general okay. question? Are you please going to go through them? 
um you because you've touched on some of them i just wanted you to uh move on with that or oh, okay so maybe let's just go to the general question time because we don't have too much time left and then okay, and then, uh, um, okay if i can touch on them, on them briefly very well you you requested for the latest statistics about covid coronavirus cases especially in ghana currently i start um, uh, 10 a.m. this morning. The new cases were 390, 390 new cases. We have confirmed cases to be 17,741. We have active cases to be 4,361. Then we have recoveries through discharge cases to be 13,268. And then deaths are at 1,102, sorry, 102 cases. So many questions have been asked, why do we suddenly have a, a sharp rise in our recovery cases? You know, um, before then, um, Ghana Health Service used to have a protocol. Before you could declare someone um, fit and recovered from COVID-19, we do two tests, um, two tests. The first test will come 14 days after the person is recovered. That's if a person tests negative. And then any day from um, day three upwards, then we test another negative. But World Health Organization came out with a policy or a directive that once a patient is tested first negative and does not present with any signs and symptoms for 10 days, then the patient has lesser or no chances of infecting any other. Ghana even made it up to, um, uh, up to 14. The World Health Organization is recommending 10 days. But Ghana has, has actually made it up to 14 days. So that's how come the rise in our recoveries. So most of them who are fine after first negative test, they discharge, they don't go, have to go through the second um, uh, confirmation negative test. Yeah, just to explain that. And then, also another, that is it true that Ghana is not on the list of um, 54 countries that have been granted permission to EU due to our struggle with COVID-19? Yes, it is. It's true. The Euro News um, uh, asked them, uh, on 25th of June, it was reported that 15 countries will be allowed entry into the European Union. And even um, uh, after this, from 29th, it was dropped to 15 countries instead of the 54. The first 54, Ghana was not part. The second 15 listed, Ghana is still not part. And their criteria for this is, they depend on how the, your, your number of cases you've recorded in the past 14 days and how your government is handling the COVID-19 cases in your country. So if they feel it is not being well handled or your cases are on the rise, they don't allow you entry. Yeah. So Ghana, Ghana is actually part of the, uh, it's not part of the 15 countries or the 54 countries that were, uh, that were granted chance. And then another one was observing and um, working with us as a physician assistant at the clinic, at the law court complex. What should lawyers do? What should lawyers be doing to keep ourselves and others safe? Okay. So with this one, we all know, I just need to highlight on few, but we all know the precautionary measures we use. But I'm, I'm narrowing this to the lawyers and then the work schedule. Yeah, I'll advise that um, uh, at least um, lawyers live in an office of more than two or three. To not use AC in the room. At least open, uh, you can operate in an open space, uh, open um, uh, office. Your window should be open, fans can put on and then just allow enough aeration in the room. And then with regards to the use of your rooms, I also advise that mostly after the close of work, if you have a special place to keep them, in that you don't, you don't carry them home and then even after using you try to disinfect your hands with the hand-based sanitizers. And then even if you carry it home, please dry it under a sunshine or early before use. 
And then um, in most cases, we see um, um, clients giving their phones to lawyers in the form of um, gathering information. Please, can, uh, I would like you to talk to my brother for more information. At this COVID time, I will strongly advise that such a habit should be avoided. Unless you can let your client even put it on a loudspeaker, that will serve you great. Instead of handling the, the, the client phone yourself to communicate. And then um, uh, just to buttress on what um, court manager has said, we also make good use of the e-justice system. Yeah, that will help us minimize physical contact with our um, clients. So the other one was, once you have contracted the virus, does it damage your liver and your lungs permanently? The answer is no then yes, to a very small extent. What happens is that when one gets um, COVID after, after um, recovering, it leaves behind um, a mark, usually which is done after 12 weeks of your recovery. We have a mark left behind called the reti re reticular shadow. It's a very thin line on, which is shown on your X-ray report, your chest X-ray report. And that is the beginning of a pulmonary fibrosis, which is pulmonary scar, i.e. a scar in the lungs. So this thing happened into the most severest cases, mostly those who have undergone ventilator management stand a chance of um, getting this. But in all cases, it is about 20% 20, 20 of people who stand a chance to get such permanent damage. But with the liver, there is no study on the liver. Yeah. So the, the myth that it will leave you behind with the permanent lung damage is to some extent not true. It's just 20% of people, and those people will, will be those who have suffered the severest form of COVID-19. Then we also have some myths surrounding COVID-19, which needs to disabuse our minds. And what are some of the myths surrounding COVID-19 which we need to disabuse our minds of? There are a lot of myths to start with. Some people even believe that coronavirus doesn't exist. But in reality, it does. Because we've heard people die. We've seen on news people dying in their numbers in other countries. So we are so blessed to have very low fatality rate in Ghana. But we are equally climbing up. Because as it stands now, we have 112 cases and um, mortality in Ghana. And then there is also a myth that people who take alcohol, if you take much alcohol, you stand no chance of developing COVID-19. It's not true. There is also a, a saying that thermal scanners, the thermal scanners is the gun thermometers we use. That once they use to scan on you, they can be able to detect if you have COVID-19 or not. It's not true. It is only to take your temperature and not to detect whether you have COVID-19 or so. There is also a myth that adding much pepper into your diet will make you free from contracting COVID. It's also not true. And then um, another one says that rinsing your nostrils or your nose with saline solution, that salt-based solution, prevent you from contracting coronavirus. That one too is not true. To some extent, it will minimize your um, uh, chances of getting other flus like common cold and other viral rhinitis, but for coronavirus, it's not true. There is also a myth that spraying, on, um, uh, spraying or introducing disinfectants on your body saves you from coronavirus. That one is not true. Then uh, we also have... Um, uh, People, people, yes, people can, I, can I relieve you of your myths? Because, okay. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> thank you so much for taking us through the questions and uh, updating us on the virus. And right. doctor, we know we can find you at the law, the complex clinic. Yeah. So members, if you want to continue with that discussion, uh, we know where to find But I, I wanted to touch on this very last one. There was a very question, well. are we near our peak as a nation? That, 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 that question is highly controversial. 
Because the Ghana Health Service has actually told us some time ago that we're at our peak. But um, even the director of um, um, Public Health Ghana um, Health Service, Dr. Bedisa Kodye, said we have achieved our, uh, our peak, but he cannot categorically say something on that. So that one lies strictly on the hands of Noguchi, because they are the uh, test center. But to me personally, I think we haven't achieved our peak. If you have achieved our peak, we wouldn't have still been having rises in our case. So let's all oh. be cautious and let's not lose guard. Yeah. Uh, so should we go for testing, doctor? Very necessary. It is. If, if they need be, why not? Because it's always good to know your, 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 your status. As we have majority of cases going as asymptomatic, you may not know. Even if it is in you, you can contract and um, you, you can infect others innocently. So if there is an opportunity for us to go for testing, it will be very, very helpful. At least once you know your status, you start to be more cautious from there. Yeah.